hey guys and welcome back to another video hope you are all okay on that side of the screen now today i've got here with me the zidu x9 android tv box and with no further ado let's take it for a ride and i'll see you in a few minutes for the conclusion So the Zidu X9 features the quad-core CPU M-Star 9180, 2GB of RAM, 8GB of storage and the octa-core GPU Mali 450. It also comes with the Android version 4.4.2. And now as usual, let's go for our very quick unboxing and there we go. So we will find some documentation which usually I say only if you have free time because these devices are very easy to use. And after removing that documentation, here we are with the Zidu X9, which we will take a closer look in just a brief moment. We will also find the HDMI cable that will connect this device to our TV, and of course the power adapter, which in this case is for European Union, so if you live somewhere else in the world, just order the right version or get an adapter as usual. Finally, we can remove the IR remote control, which we will be testing later on on the video. Now let's take a closer look at the front of the device and as you can see we will have that LED clock light which in my opinion adds a certain style to this device. Now talking about front lights you know that one of my concerns is always to check if the device is capable of being placed in a bedroom or in a dark environment without hurting our eyes and in here what I have to say is that the camera itself makes the lights much more stronger than what I actually see in person with my eyes. Now nonetheless I did place it on a bedroom for a couple of nights didn't bother at all but if you are more sensitive than me then once you place the device in standby the lights will go off. And now let's take a quick look to the messages that we see on the display. So once we turn it on, we will have that boot message when the device is booting and then it passes to hello, giving you a welcome message. And finally, we'll show you the time, which in my opinion, this actually gives a nice touch to this device. Now on the left side, we will find two USB 2.0 ports, one USB 3.0 port and a micro SD card slot. On the right hand side we will find no ports at all while at the back we will find the rest of the ports necessary to connect this device to our tv starting with the dc in hdmi out av output hdmi in which we will talk in a little bit reset button optical output ethernet connection and an off on switch now regarding the antennas we have a dual antenna system which are non-detachable antennas but that can be rotated 180 degrees in any direction well except the direction of the device but in any other direction you can rotate them to fit your own needs and now just to give you a closer look at the top of the device as you can see that brushed aluminium style really looks good and this is real brushed aluminium not plastic and at the bottom also all metallic with four really nice rubberized feet and the vents to cool the system down. And now to wrap up this part of the overview just to give you my feedback this device really feels sturdy and high quality all made of brushed aluminium and even the bottom part it's not plastic is metallic brushed aluminium so it really feels and looks awesome the only part that it's not metallic it's the front black glass that will give us the display and now let's stop talking about this device and start using it and the first test that i did was the remote control which is included the infrared remote and as an infrared remote as you know the signal is not very good especially this device that it's all metal enclosure so once you turn the remote control to another way it will not capture the signal but this is something that you can solve very easily and as you can see on screen using a cheap remote control wireless you will get the signal everywhere so i will try not forget to post a link to one of these remotes so you can check it out and now changing the topic a little bit as you can see on the screen this is the default launcher on this machine the zidu ui and what i can say here as you can see on the screen it's very fluid no problems at all very fast to browse and this is one of those launchers that can be very useful for those that are using one of these machines for the first time which has everything included all you have to do is select one theme and you will have the app that you want but let me remind you that this is an Android machine, so if by any reason you are not totally happy with the default launcher, just go to the Google Play Store, download your favorite launcher, customize it the way you want, and you will have a different looking machine, more simple or more complicated depending on what you like. And now before we start testing this device, let's talk about a feature that I do love on any Android machine, and this Zidu X9 is not an exception, which is the 
online update. So as you can see on the screen, and I took a few screenshots because I actually updated while I was still testing on the office. So here it is, a few steps that we will have to take, but the machine will do all the hard work for us, so no problems at all. Once we have a new update available, just press the button and the machine will do everything for us. And now taking a quick look at some benchmarks and to start off with we have the Wi-Fi speed test and as usual 10 meters away from my office we got about 17 megabits of download and 17, 18 megabits of upload. And now moving to the Ethernet connection through a power line adapter we get about 32 megabits of download and 18, 19 megabits of upload. Moving along to Geekbench 3 we got a score of 340 on a single core score and 1040 on a multi-core score. Next was Anton Zoom Benchmark and in here we got a score of roughly 18,000. On 3D Mark we got a score of 2,335. And finally on Epic Citadel Benchmark we got an average score of 28.8 frames per second. And after watching these benchmarks I was a little bit concerned to see how this device would perform and this once again proves that benchmarks are not everything. So in the past we have seen machines that have high benchmarks and do not perform that great and as well machines that do have lower benchmarks and then performs great. And this is the case of Zido X9. As you can see on screen, gaming is great. And the first test was the Despicable Me as usual. So everything went just fine except my play capabilities. Next game on the bench was, as usual, Cars game, which is a simple game, but here I would like to mention that in the past some machines did not perform well with this game, and in here we didn't have any glitch at all, everything worked perfectly, as you can see on screen, no freezes whatsoever, so you can play definitely these type of games. Moving along to Beach Buggy, which is also, as you know, one of my favorites, everything run perfectly, as you can see on the screen, no problems whatsoever playing these more demanding type of games. And talking about more demanding games, here we are with GT Racing 2, which run flawlessly. Now, this game, as you know, it's more GPU intensive, so it pushes the device and it worked great. As you can see, no problems in games play, so if this is one of those type of games that you like, here it is, Zido X9 can play it with no problems at all. And to wrap up this gaming performance tests, here we are with Asphalt 8 Airborne, which is really great. And I have to mention that the camera cannot capture what we see in person. And as some of you might have played this game, even on mobile uh, devices, you know that the graphics are really nice. So once again, everything run flawless. And as you can see, I did try it in two maps, one during the day and one during the night. And the results were exactly the same. No problems whatsoever. Everything run flawless. And now let's check out the video capability of this device and as usual for that I always use Kodi and on this case the machine comes with Kodi pre-installed so if you don't want to bother and installing in my case I always try the latest version available on Kodi website and in here as you can see on the screen 180p playing from a NAS unit it's not connected directly to the device so it captures from the Ethernet connection through my power line adapter as I mentioned before and as you can see everything runs perfectly even when you fast forward or rewind it the media playback is just great. Now on the other hand we did also test 4k playback and in here while inside Kodi and as you can see on screen it just went down. I did do this test multiple times, turn off the machine and turn it on again and the same result happened. And I was wondering if this machine is performing so well, what the hell is wrong here? It can't be hardware. And it isn't. It's something on the software side which hopefully it will be fixed very soon. And as you can see using the default player on the z X9 we can play 4K out of our network perfectly even when we fast forward or rewind there are no problems so my conclusion here regarding the playback is that the device hardware is totally capable of playing 4k but there is a small issue on the software side which hopefully with these online updates soon we will have an update which will resolve this and now do you remember that HDMI in that we saw previously on the video. Yeah, that's right. So we can connect any device that has HDMI output to this Zido X9. And the result is that you are able to record the content. And in here you can see a little bit of the settings. So you can select the, in my case, full HD 
mp4 formats and you can start recording the screen as you can see here so you can record to an sd card or a micro sd card sorry or you can record to the internal storage as you choose or any usb drive and just out of curiosity, the channel that we are watching right now is the RTP1, which is a public channel, the oldest in our country, and it was created in 1957. And right now what we are watching is a sample that I did record while I was testing this device. And what I can say or my feedback about this is that it's not pixel perfect as we see it on full HD, but it's good enough. Now, I would like to remind you that this was compressed while recording and then compressed when I render it. And once it got to YouTube, it was compressed again. So having that in mind, the quality is not bad at all. And this is for me a bonus feature in one of these devices, being able of streaming videos and playing some games you are now able to record anything that comes out from a hdmi um, device and in this case you are already watching that i did have some fun with shadows of mordor and the device was connected to my computer and what i can say here is that you have no delay on gaming actually the action that you perform is the action that um, you are watching on screen live so no delay at all on this giving this device a great capability on recording although as i mentioned the quality is not perfect and now let's go to the final part of this review which is the mirroring capabilities of this device and for that i always use my airpin pro app and as you can see with the iphone 4s everything plays really nice there's always that bit of delay that i mentioned on all videos but this happens with any phone and any box combination so no miracles there the thing that you can notice also is that the video quality is great and the response is really fast so no problems whatsoever in transmitting or mirroring the iphone to the z2 x9 and now moving along to the iPad mini with retina display, what I can say is that it worked as well as it did with the iPhone 4S, so no surprises here at all, everything was flawless. And although that this is a feature that I don't use a lot here at home, or we don't use a lot here at home, I do see the benefit of being able to select content, put it to stream on the TV while you keep on working on your tablet. So your family or your friends will be watching something and probably you are browsing around or sending emails and that's what I'm testing there with my hand to one side and the other just to test if the tablet responds and there's any glitch on the TV, which doesn't happen. Everything works flawless. And to finish up the mirroring capabilities of the z 2 X9, I'm mirroring my wife's iMac to the living room TV, which is something that for those that follow the channel for a while know that we use a lot. And for that, we use the iPhoto app that contains all our library. Now, my feedback here is that the audio is perfect, but the image has some small glitches. As you can see on screen, hopefully you can. There are some small artifacts or glitches, whatever it's the most correct word for that. And although this is not a deal breaker, it is a bit annoying while we are seeing. Now, on the other hand, this has happened on the past on a few machines and for sure that this is a firmware thing that can be fixed. And I'm going to give my uh, feedback to the support team of Zidu and hopefully soon I will have the firmware update and with online updates i'm sure that this will be very easy to fix either on the app or the firmware i'm not sure at this moment but i will keep you posted once this thing is fixed and that is it guys so we have reached the end of this review hope you have enjoyed the video and hopefully i could answer most of the questions that you guys had and if i did not as usual just write down below in the comment section and i will get back to you as soon as i can and as best as i can now let me share with you the things that i did like the most and the things that i did like the less on the z2 x9 as i do on all my videos and on the top of my list of the things that i did like the most is the online updates so the z2 x9 as you saw in the video is capable of online updating and for me any machine that is capable of this has my highly respect because if these machines have a small bug here and there and they are fixed on the future i do not have to mess around with files all i have to do is press the button drink a water or an orange juice or whatever and then when i get back the machine will be updated for me so this is in my opinion a great plus next is the enclosure itself which is all metallic, one piece brushed aluminium, which will cover um, the device, and then one second piece on the bottom, which is also metallic. This, besides looking good, 
and making the device very sturdy. It also acts as a giant cooler for the device, so it will dissipate or help to dissipate heat from the metallic enclosure, which you can feel when you put uh, the hand on the top, you'll feel the enclosure a little bit warm, and that means that is dissipating the heat. So a great plus here on both sides looks good and helps to dissipate the heat. Next is the recording capability. So this device is capable of recording any device that has HDMI output. And as you saw in the video, I did try on the TV and I did try on my uh, computer playing a little bit of Shadows of Mother. So this makes this machine an all-in-one, if I can say so, uh, because it's capable of uh, streaming our media, playing games, and also being, a, well, more things, but especially for those that we use here at home, and then capable of recording anything that has an HDMI output, which is great in my opinion. Next is the Zido UI, or the default launcher if you want to call that. And on my opinion, it's very easy to use, especially for those that are beginning on the Android TV world um, for the first time. And it's really responsive, as you saw, very fast to use and very intuitive on my opinion. Of course, one reminder again, this is an Android TV box, so if you want to install your own default launcher, uh, not default launcher, but your own launcher, just go to the Google Play Store, as I said, and download your own, and you will have a different look on it. So this is a great plus as well. And the firmware, uh, I would like to mention here, this is not the first time that this happens. We saw low or compared to other machines, lower benchmarks, but the firmware integration of this machine is very well built. So even with the, those low benchmarks, the machine was capable of running everything. And this is a great plus for the team that's behind this, which has done a great job. Now also, and the last point on the things that I did like the most is the fast support that Zidu has. Now, you saw in the video that I did find uh, two problems or two small bugs which uh, will be fixed and I did write a support ticket to the Zidu while I was recording the video and I already had the answer. They are working on a fix and soon I will be able to press that button and have this machine fully working. So that's a great plus and that's why online updates was on the top of my list. And now let's go finally to the things that I did like the less and one was the Kodi application that did not run 4K. Now, this is one of those things that uh, I already had answer and it will be fixed. They will be releasing soon a new version of firmware that we will up, uh, update and with a new version of Kodi made for this machine, which will be able to play those 4K files with no problem. As you saw, it's not the hardware because I could play 4K files on the network uh, but not on Kodi, on the default player. And the second thing was the iMac, uh, which is right on the back over there, switched off right now, <laughs> um, sending slideshows to the TV. The sound was perfect, but there were a bit of glitches on the images. So that's another thing that will be fixed. I'm not sure even if it's the app or the firmware. One of those is it's software, not hardware. So I'm totally happy with this. And that is it, guys. So hope you have enjoyed the video once again. My name is Roberto George, and I'll see you on the next one.